you know, one of the thought that went into, mm -hmm. you know, usually, I mean, 12 o'clock is a bit late. If there was a reason for it, I would have liked to have heard that from, it would have been nice if Sherry had. I think we have a consensus, though, to um, end by 11. 11. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have one item that needs to have a motion. Move approval. With the, of the remaining, change. with the change uh, to 11, uh, ending at 11 p.m. Um, uh, for item E2. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the event permit with the condition that they end the event by 11 p.m. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Passed. All right, now we're moving into our regular agenda, uh, and we'll have citizens' comments first regarding um, unfinished business with the agreement for Vision Internet for our website redesign, uh, regarding our recycling cart versus recycling bin services, uh, discussion regarding dogs and parks, vehicular traffic on Tripoli Boulevard, and our YMCA lease renewal options. Uh, anyone wishing to make comments, please uh, state your name for the record, and you will be limited to three minutes. Good morning. My name is Dottie Vivoda, and I'm the owner of Small Biz Webs. And I've been uh, doing website design for the past 15 years in Colorado as well as here in Florida. I'm the city's current web designer, and I have been for the past seven years. I've thoroughly enjoyed working with the city, and I hope that I can continue to do so in the future. I'm also a member of the One Community, One Message team and have been since its inception. I've worked on several projects for the city, including graphic design projects, web design, and custom designed intranet training websites. Seven years ago, in October of 2008, I was asked to redesign the city's website. Back then, a committee was formed to select a vendor who could work with the city and provide them with a website that was innovative, easy to maintain and manage, and help to communicate important information to our residents. Today we are making a decision that is very similar to the one we made seven years ago. It's vitally important to select a vendor who clearly understands our vision, our needs and direction of the One Community, One Message initiative. The vendor must be able to demonstrate their ability to inject insight, knowledge, and best practices into the web design. They also must know how we differ from most cities as well as be able to correctly interpret and incorporate our vision for the future. They must have a vested interest in the success of the project. On February 17th, I sat in on three vendor presentations who responded to the city's RFP. I spent the entire day watching these vendors promote their products and services, and after four and a half hours, it was clear to me who was the vendor of choice. That vendor is Revise. Revise spent their one and a half hour time frame explaining to the city how they understood the city's unique needs. They clearly understood the requirements set forth in the RFP and demonstrated their understanding, get out of here, bug, <laughs> of the One Community, One Message needs. The salesperson arrived on a Friday and spent the weekend staying in our hotels, shopping at Fisherman's Village, ate in our restaurants, and felt what it's like to live in Punta Gorda. Their software is state-of-the-art, and it's based on Java technology, which is deployed on more than 9 billion devices. They showed us other city websites they designed that are unsurpassed. So during the vendor presentations, as the vendors were highlighting their flagship websites, I was bringing each of them up on my mobile phone to see how they looked. All of Revise's websites look beautiful, were responsive on the mobile phone, and were professionally designed. I did not experience that with the vendor Vision Internet. I found their websites to be blurry, most of their graphics didn't display properly, and the websites weren't responsive on the mobile phones. At the, I only have a minute. At the close of the presentations, the Evaluation Selection Committee made their decision to select the vendor Vision Internet. It took me by surprise, and I have to admit that I was thoroughly disappointed. Vision Internet clearly did not demonstrate an appreciation for the city's needs, their ability to give the city a website that is functional on all platforms. That means laptops, mobile phones, 
and tablets, and they lacked an understanding and appreciation of the One Community, One Message needs. So let me conclude by saying that for the past seven years, the city has entrusted me to provide them with guidance, direction, and creativity into these web-related projects, and that is what I'm offering today. Just like you, I care about our city and making the best long-term decision. Thank you for your time, and I appreciate, appreciate all that you do for this wonderful city. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Any other comments on issues re that we will be discussing? Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Name and Good morning, Charlie Council, BSIA, Puerto Dakota Citizen. Uh, my comments are directed to uh, item 8B uh, relating to uh, the volume of traffic on uh, <clears throat> Tripoli. Uh, this has been a community concern, at least uh, sort of an official capacity since I was uh, on the board, uh, started on the BSIA board back in 06. My estimation, uh, it's uh, primarily an issue of uh, volume. Uh, I live in close proximity to Tripoli. I'm on Tripoli uh, at least once, if not twice or three times a day. Uh, very familiar with uh, the issue there. Uh, Tripoli is no longer a neighborhood street. It's really an extension of Route 41, at least that section of it that's between Madrid and Monaco. Anyone, and I'm not just talking about trucks, anyone that's exiting, for the most part, from either Publix or from uh, Home Depot, and uh, wants to go north on 41, comes down Tripoli. North and Tripoli makes a right on Monaco in order to have access to the traffic light and going north on 41. So again, vehicular traffic, yeah, there's some trucks on there, but vehicular traffic uh, primarily is the, uh, is the villain. Uh, the answer is not to calm traffic. We can put bumps in and we can do this and we can do, do that. I think the issue really is to divert it. And by diversion, we mean uh, reestablishing at the intersection of Madrid and Route 41 the ability and access to uh, make a, uh, a northbound turn, whether that's effect effective with a traffic light or some other traffic, uh, traffic design. I think that's the thing to answer the question. Uh, the effort starts with city support, but it extends to the county and then to multi-county uh, agencies in order to uh, have this thing get some leaks, uh, uh, legs and perhaps come to fruition. So I would ask the uh, council's uh, support uh, uh, meet the needs of uh, our community down in Burnt Store Isles. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. My name is Jessica Verluge, and I am the asset manager for the Burnt Store Promenade. And I also agree with exactly what he just said, that we do need to have some type of exit going north on 41. So Kite Realty is the company that I work for, and we will support and work together with the city if we can get this done. Thank you. Appreciate it. No yes, sir. Uh, good morning. I'm Don McCormick speaking in my capacity as, as president of the South Charlotte County Coalition. Uh, we received a very excellent presentation from Council Member Prafke on February 26th, and the membership president at that meeting unanimously instructed me to come here and speak on behalf of correcting the Tripoli problem along the lines of what uh, Charlie Council's laid out here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, good morning. My name is Stephen Baker, and I live at 323 Monaco. Uh, I agree with everything that's been stated up to this point, but I would also like to <coughs> say that um, the speed limit on Monaco is 30 miles an hour. And uh, I know that the majority of people that travel uh, to the east on Monaco, out on 41, are doing exceedingly more than the speed limit. And I would think that at the very least that that could be made a four-way intersection stop sign there at the Tripoli Monaco intersection because um, I, kn I try to back out of my driveway there at 323, which is between Tripoli and 41. And I have waited as much as 10 minutes trying to back out of my driveway. If, there were, if that was a four-way intersection stop, 
sign at each location, I wouldn't have that problem. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, Ray Rose, um, Punta Gorda. So, uh, uh, subject is 7B, the garbage containers. Yes, if it's really necessary to go through and get quotes and go through that process, I would like to comment that the majority of the people I've talked to are very happy with the small bins and see uh, either one of the two rolling bins is just a problem for storage and cleaning. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good morning. My name is Robert Offert. I reside at 3713 Tripoli Boulevard. I'm here to speak on the Tripoli issue. I live between Madrid and Monaco. Uh, I own the newest home on that portion of the street. Uh, we bought the lot in July. If I had known back then the traffic situation that I'm facing now, I would have gone someplace else and built. However, it is what it is. Um, the issue is getting the traffic out on 41. Uh, I now live on a major thoroughfare. Um, as far as speed levels, I've, uh, I'm a retired police officer with 25 years service. Um, I have spoken to your chief of police. I honestly feel he does not have the resources to provide patrol officers to run radar uh, wherever these issues pop up. Uh, I understand that. He does a marvelous job. But I uh, just wanted to let you know that uh, the problem has been here, it is here, um, and it's not going to go away. So I certainly hope that we take a serious look at this and address it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> My name is Chuck Modulin. I live at uh, 3779 Tripoli. I bought my house in July also, a few years ago. No traffic during the summer, like when the snowbirds are here. <coughs> but there is a lot of traffic now, and it's not just the cars. I'm concerned with the trucks. We've called the police at 4 o'clock in the morning when semi-trucks have been going down our road. And uh, they used to have the Brinks trucks and a lot of trucks. It's calmed down a bit, but we still have to cure the truck situation also. And uh, I've talked with uh, the police and tried to get them to enforce what the sign <laughs> says. It, uh, there, there's a sign that says six-wheeled trucks and um, just local deliveries only. All these trucks don't stop on our street. They just turn on to go to, on the 41. So I, what I'd like to see is uh, on the truck issue is to maybe make it a gross vehicle weight of a certain amount of tonnage. like. 7,000 pound gross vehicle weight as a maximum, and that would cut down on a lot of traffic with trucks, and the police could enforce that very well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Good morning, I'm Randy Dunn, CEO at the uh, Charlotte County Family YMCA, and I know we're on the agenda on our extension of our lease at the Bayfront Center. I have Gary Trimmer here with me, who's my lead volunteer uh, on the sailing program, and I'll be here and available for any questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Good, excuse, excuse me. Good morning. Bill Hughes, president of the Villa Grindley at Bernstein Isles. Most of our buildings are on Alba Seat, so we're not affected by the traffic per se on Tripoli. But we do have buildings on Monaco. And when the traffic is heavy, people are turning right onto Monaco. <coughs> excuse me. And we're backing up onto the driveways of people. As Mr. Baker said, he had trouble getting out of his driveway. So the, something's got to be done to alleviate that traffic. I don't know if the four-way stop sign is what or put in the, uh, a new light, uh, which Charlie suggested, but it is, a, it is a major problem for the community. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I am Chuck Kirsch. My wife Judy and I have been living on Tripoli at 3835 for the last 10 years, before the condos were built across the street. One other thing for consideration of this speed and the amount of traffic is we now have children. And the children are out there playing in the streets, playing in the neighborhoods, People walking their dogs, some of them get loose. <clears throat> With that amount of traffic traveling at those kind of speeds, something has to be done. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. <coughs> Good morning. Mayor Freeland. It's very nice to see you and neighbors. And Mike Fauci, 3536 Dipper Court, Punt in uh, the Isles. I'm here to just to discuss a little bit of uh, information that maybe will help the Council, regarding the uh, dogs in the park, 
uh, first, I really have to say I'm a dog lover from so long ago. I don't have a dog currently, but I probably will change in the future. Having said that, uh, I think it's important that we understand that my wife and I do a lot of walking. One of the places that we used to walk was on a bridge. The problem with that is that even the well-behaved dogs that we have in Punta Gorda, the most loving dogs in the world, well-trained, everything going, if you walk on that bridge and somebody's walking opposite you, dogs will be dogs. They'll jump and make that they want to love and everything else. Well, we changed our walks and we're now into the parks and with beautiful harbor walk. Well, I'm recovering from shoulder surgery and three weeks ago I started walking out on our harbor walk and some of the things I noticed were a little bit stronger than I ordinarily would see. While walking on the path that's there, I encountered things that probably wouldn't have noticed before. One in particular is, you know, dogs, uh, let's say not the dogs, the owners of the dogs had very, very long leashes. Some of these leashes extend out, you know, like 25 feet. And I was walking by the, uh, the four points and here we go, we got a dog coming down this way, a dog coming down this way, two of them have big leashes, and they're using the grass area as a dog run. I, I think that it, it, the inevitable happened. We're competing for space with all the visitors that we've brought into town, people walking everywhere, and here we go with a couple of dogs running out on very long leashes. Inevitably, they tangle up. They got everybody going which way is trying to get out of the way of the dogs. They're not vicious. These dogs aren't going to hurt us. It's just, there's just so much room that you can possibly get on it. While in other cases, there were dogs that were being walked, and if you take a look at them, they're really very controlled. I mean, the dogs are alongside the owners. To be honest with you, two days ago, I walked the same area, and I didn't encounter the long leash, but I did encounter uh, three people walking with unleashed dogs, but they were like two inches from the people. No problems occurred, everything was just fine because they were close to the owner and they were in fact walking. They weren't using the area as a dog park. I'm not sure where we're gonna go, but if we do decide that we want to do dogs into the park, maybe the council has got to take a look at this and maybe we don't need such uh, long leashes, you know, I mean, I think it can go a long way if we're using the walkway like w humans use the walk park. You know, you're walking along and you're keeping with it. So I hope that will uh, help out. I'm not really against and I'm not for, I'm just worried. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, well. Lots of good information. <laughs> All right, we will now move into, actually, um, why don't we take a five-minute break and before we get into the major agenda. I'd like to uh, reconvene our meeting. <clears throat> we have uh, unfinished business. And the first is the approval to negotiate an agreement with Vision Internet of Santa Monica, California for a website redesign. Right. IT manager, Brad, um, why don't you just give a synopsis of where we are. Uh, Brad Schutte, IT manager for the city. Um, as was stated uh, during the citizen comments, uh, we had our presentations from the, the vendors that were uh, had responded to our RFP on the 17th of February. The um, review count, the review committee, consisted of five individuals, and um, upon listening to the presentations of all three companies, uh, we submitted, as is recorded in the agenda, um, the recommendation to the council to select Vision Internet as the um, website designer, as uh, the next website designer for the city. Um, to clarify, the, the choice that we're making isn't turning 
the total work over to the designer and us and, and accepting what they've got. What we were looking more for in this iteration of, of making a decision was a company that could provide us with a very robust content management system that would allow us to do a better job throughout the city of maintaining our website, of keeping it fresh, keeping it up to date, keeping the designs current, and making the best use of, of that medium as we possibly could. And it was the committee's feeling that Vision Internet did the best job of that, gave us the most flexibility in the tool, allowed us to be able to have a lot of different choices of how we wanted to use that real estate of our website. And so we submit them to you as our first choice um, for uh, to follow through and purchase. Any questions? Rachel, I'll start. Um, I spent several hours yesterday on the phone with the references from Revise and Vision, and they both can do the job. There's no doubt in my mind. They both had pros and they both had cons. They both had super happy customers. They both had a few customers that found their product glitchy or, you know, every city is totally different. So it's really hard to say, oh, well, that's exactly how we want to use it or, or that type of thing. And what I was telling Brad, it was interesting that a couple of the cities that I talked to I would ask them, how many users do you have in the content management system? Oh, we have two. We have the two IT people. And I'm thinking <laughs> the whole point is to get the employees involved and have them have some ownership of their department or however you slice and dice it. Exactly. Um, that's the whole point. So that was pretty interesting too. But um, Vision got very good reviews. The one negative that came out from two of their current customers was that um, in the last couple months, they've had some attacks that I've told you about where their, their server was Denial attacked, not the, not the city's website. So they're working on that. And the, the, both the customers said they're working diligently to solve those problems. Um, some of the people really like the templates. And some of the people said, well, it really restricts what you can do. But that's kind of a good thing. If you're going to have all these different users that are going to be putting content on your website, you want it to have the same look and feel. So. Um, I think they both can do a great job. We tasked the selection committee to do work for us. And, you know, they did their work, and I'm, I'm okay with the, the outcome of, of their selection. Nancy? Um, I have a lot to say. <clears throat> um, first, I completely respect um, the policies, the procurement policies, the staff. Um, the evaluation selection committee for their expertise, their time, their dedication, and their commitment to this whole process. Uh, as the leader of the one community, one message team now, um, what we are looking for is someone that can provide a consistent marketing communication message uh, throughout our community. And um, you know, the brochure that we developed was the first product we want this to be transformational communication. And I've uh, discussed this with our One Community, One Message team. And, um, and on behalf of the, the OCOM team, we, again, appreciate everything that everyone has done. We also learned the significance of mobility at the Florida League of Cities. And that is critical that we can communicate a consistent message across all devices and today there are more mobile devices and a variety of mobile devices in a variety of sizes we want it to be consistent so no matter if someone's looking at their iPad for this minute and their smartphone the next minute they're getting a consistent message and um, the other thing I come from a background of having been a, an account executive and, and did exactly what these presenters did and I was the sales instructor at, and technical instructor at the AT&T National Training Center and taught these people to do what they do. And the kind of thing that we would instruct is you first need to approach a community or a, a client that you're helping them solve their business problems and you're helping them um, with, their, with their business achieving goals and objectives. And I did not feel, as my, my uh, overall observations from, the, from that day, there was only one vendor that actually approached the whole of the communication from a business problem solving stance, and that was revised. He clearly um, spoke out and, 
and mentioned uh, the one community one message and and how that was driving things and and he, and he really um, spoke to our community and wanting to help us move forward that didn't happen with vision internet the person that came in on vision internet was very focused they didn't know our co their, our community um, and didn't understand where we wanted to go and so it boiled down to a features benefit a feature what we would call bells and whistles discussion and that doesn't solve business problems that doesn't help us achieve what we want to achieve um, we also know that um, every every capability every customer as you mentioned or every company as Rachel mentioned has capabilities and, and lots of technical capabilities um, a lot of what is available a little of it's used um, so it boils down to that 80 20 rule um, we also know that the the presenter for vision uh, was a fill-in at the last minute because their account executive had quit the company that was supposed to have been here so um, I also uh, know one of the topics was that uh, one of the downsides was viewed as a downside to vision or to uh, revise was that there was uh, an aggressive timeline to help us meet our goals and that was viewed as well they really can't do that well that should be a, become a part of a discussion and a negotiation uh, a negotiation factor so at the end of the day of that presentation I was very disappointed at the outcome and I went home and I I said I need to do some homework to try to figure out well is it me or am I am I right so I went to 24 different websites, and I have a document here if you want me to share this with you. I can, you can take one and pass it along. Um, and I went to 24 different websites of both Revise and of Vision Internet. And I looked at what do these websites look like? How do they respond on their mobile phones? And if you look at this document, one side is, is Revise and one side is, is Vision. And what, I've, what I got from this in doing this homework was Revise was very consistent. All of their, they're really good at the mobility. Their websites were very visual. Their websites were, was, they were doing a great job of coaching their customers, or their clients, on, on how to go about this. And that's the expertise we're looking for. I didn't get that from Vision. Vision internets were all over the place. And in fact, many of the mobility websites were just words with no pictures, not similar at all. Um, one of the factors on this column is responsive design. And we saw that demonstrated where if you open up the internet and you drag the, and make the, the um, screen smaller, it just resizes things so that you still get a very similar look and feel. And, and Vision doesn't do that consistently. Uh, Revise is very, very consistent. So I looked at that and I said, this company has been doing this for a long time. And they've been, they've been coaching their, their clients and advising their clients. And to me, that's more leading edge than, than a client that's catching up. And I, I saw Vision Internet is catching up. And, and from a one community, one message team, we really felt like Revise is where we need to go and revises is our recommendation. <coughs> Tom, comments? Oh, I'll wait. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I guess I just have a, the bells and whistles discussion. I see that as a positive thing because, you know, we're looking at the here and now, but we're already way behind. I mean, a lot of these right. clients that I've talked to have had these contracts for years and years and years, and both were happy on both sides. That's why I'm saying they both can deliver what we want. This is the city's website. It is the city's website, and if we, I feel like now, if we, if if the council wanted to make, you know, the ultimate decision, we are the ones that should have done the work, um, not after the fact. But both cus both customers um, that I talked to, I said, how did the design phase go? And any on both vendor side, they both said if there were any timing issues, it was because of the city, not because of the vendor. And they both had good things to say about the design teams. They both liked the mock-ups and the presentations of um, what they were initially given. They thought they had very great input. 
Um, but I see the bells and the whistles as something that's going to pull us, move us forward instead of, you know, okay, well, yeah, let's look at it at the mobile phone. I mean, we, they're going to, they're going to be responsive. So I don't see that as an issue. Tom, did you have something? Yes, but yeah. Uh, can Brad, can you explain the difference between uh, the utilization of Java versus Microsoft? And is there a distinction between what Vision was offering versus Revise with regard to those two programs? Or for the most part, the vision has decided to go with a little bit more mainstream use of Microsoft's um, .NET tools and using their SQL, SQL Server database, which is a very, very stable platform. Um, Java, on, on the other side, is very widely used in the website industry. Um, I think that part of the consideration that we had as a, as a, a review committee was Java is very web centric and very it's very focused on just the web side of things and and the 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 fact that vision used sql and used some of the the more mainstream microsoft programming gave us the 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 feeling that we would be able to do more um, with some of the other areas that we want to portray through our website, using GIS, using uh, transparency, being able to take data that we already have in, in, uh, in our SunGuard system or in other systems and being able to put that into a, a SQL database that we would be able to work with that data better, I think, on the vision side than we would have been able to do. It would have involved more programming, which we currently don't have the resources to do. Um, by the city to be able to get that type of data into our website. Now that's so that's it's 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 simply a choice that each has made. Both are very strong platforms. Um, so obviously, you spent some time analyzing the yes. distinctions between. The, so, I have another question. Who owns the uh, the, the content <coughs> management license? Is there a different arrangement, Vision versus Revise? On, on that? Actually, how, they how that? they both handle that the same way. Um, okay. The the content management system, because that's a tool that they developed, they're never going to give us sole rights to that tool. What they do is they give whoever, you, well, you have a contract with them, you're given per, a perpetual use license. In other words, you're. Uh, an owner, a de facto owner of the content management system for as long as you have that contract with the company. But if we were to move away from them, the content management system though would be the only thing that didn't follow us. All of the code, all of the HTML code that designs, that, that causes the, the pages to come up, all of our content, all of that still belongs to us. So we would walk away with the entire design from either one of the companies, but the content management system is something that they would take back once. Um, so our ability to edit that site from the termination of contract forward, we'd have to have our own content management tool or put another one in its place. Okay. Like, like some of you, I, I also went to uh, the, the respective websites, primarily of uh, Revise and vision and uh, my experience with uh, was revised I, and I used the uh, the smartphone the iPhone as the sole criteria I thought that they can all do a pretty good job when you're looking at a big screen computer but uh, the mobile device is pretty much going to be the, what people will be using when they want to hone in on an area and get information about a city while they're out and about uh, my experience with the, and I asked Vision to send me a list that I shared with all of you, a list of all of the, the <coughs> municipalities that they had performed, had worked for. And I went through just about every one of their websites and bar none, I did not have a bad experience with any one of them. I was able to, uh, using the, uh, the iPhone, uh, move it around, expand it, and easily tap on where, wherever I, I wanted to go and I found it very... Uh, that was with Revise? Sorry? With Revise? Re with Revise, similar. I did find some... Vision. No, you're talking no, that, about I'm Vision. I'm talking about Vision. Thank yes, you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. And Revise, I found somewhat similar in some areas that I, I, I didn't feel that comfortable with. Um, but I, I'm, I'm inclined to go and support uh, what, what staff recommends here. I think, you know, the closeness between the, the two selections mm -hmm. uh, and, and their decision, one versus the other, I, that's what we pay them to do. Yeah. Um, I too did did looked at the websites and that type of thing. I sat in on the interviews and, and I really had a different feeling. I really liked Vision. I thought that they they were pretty progressive. I think they explained the um, 
responsiveness in a way that, and, and I find this true because I do use my iPhone for a lot of things, is that they don't just shrink it down and put the pictures there, which take a lot of time to load and all that kind of stuff. When you're on the road and you want to get something, you want to get to it. Where's the restaurant? Where's this? You don't want to be waiting for pictures to load and all that kind of stuff so that you're looking at all that's, you know, in there. And also I liked, um, you know, I, I did look at the websites and stuff, but I also know because I've done a lot of this with other people, I, you know, if, if, if it's busy or whatever, that's also you working with them, uh, our, us giving our vision of what our website wants to look like. Uh, most importantly for me is this is a city website. Is It's a municipal website. Uh, the One Community, One Message, we definitely want to have that look good, feel good, uh, have a little touristy thing. But the most important thing is that it's easy for our <coughs> residents to use and it's easy for our staff to use and that it's effective and efficient. And I think they both did that and um, I personally liked Vision better, but on another note, I wouldn't want to go against our IT manager, our, you know, that was your first choice, it was Jeff's first choice, and I don't have enough experience to uh, go against your decision. So <laughs> that's the way I feel about that. <laughs> I think um, as I went on the, the websites also with my mobile phone, I found some of them that were easier to navigate than others. But I would think that our intention as a city, which whatever group we do go with, is that it has to be easy to navigate. We have to have a visual on a mobile app, mobile phone, that is going to be accessible to, to everyone. So I think in terms of our criteria in staff working with the vendor, whoever it is, that it's not only the inside activity that you're doing and the ease of staff, et cetera, but it's also how does it appear and how do our customers um, work with it? So I think that would be, again, my bottom, that it has to be easy because some of them were not. And uh, in fact, I don't even remember which one was which now. But, uh, but it, yeah. again, it's, um, that, I think that would be the, the bottom line criteria. Do we have a motion? Um, I will move, hold on, wake this thing up. If I can. That we move forward with the number one selected firm vision for our website agreement. Does that sound Second. sufficient? <laughs> yes, finalize the solicitation and evaluation process, correct? Approve to negotiate. The negotiation. negotiation. Okay. With Vision Internet. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to go with uh, Vision Internet for our website design and in terms of the process of negotiation. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Okay, four to one. Thank you. Thank you. I, just want to thank, I, I would like to recognize and thank Dottie for all of the work that she has put into working with the websites, the city website. Thank you for that. And, and Nancy, thank you for going through and, and reviewing so many. Well, I think that um, you're welcome. I, we need to challenge Vision to be a good business partner. And, and um, um, no sour grapes here. Um, we didn't get, when, when um, a conversation boils down to bells and whistles, it's because they don't know us as a, as a uh, an organization and I think we need to challenge them to really deliver on that so look at Ocom is looking forward to making it happen okay thank you all right move it on uh, our discussion regarding recycling cart versus recycling bin services um, we were asked to uh, come back with ideas on whether or not we want to extend our contract with WastePro for our little bins or look at alternatives. Um, oh, over here on the right, we have a 64-gallon bin and a 48-gallon bin. If you live in unincorporated Charlotte County, you have the 64-gallon 64, 64 bin. 
this is recycling now. We're not talking trash. I got. I, I started to get some emails. Uh, we had we a were, citizen comment say trash bin. So. Not nothing to do with that. We're talking recycling. For those who use recycling, for those of us who do it quite a bit, um, we're taking out to the curb two of those little bins. Oh, some people take three. <laughs> Full to the brim, and and on a windy day, you know, it, it's you know, is, is it is it easy to hide? Is it easy to manage to in your garage or on the side and keep it hidden? Yes, no question. The little bins work fine, but mm -hmm. but we fill them to the brim, and on a windy day, they can flow over. I've if you look it. at the alternatives, I've seen the trash flying down the street. Yes, <laughs> if you look at the alternatives. Um, we have a 48-gallon bin that's smaller, and and if you took two bins, there the 48-gallon is larger than those two little bins. Not not a huge amount, but it is larger. And you got a lid over it. You wheel it on down. Um, the 64-gallon bin, uh, as a user, as a customer. It'd be kind of I don't know how that's gonna I don't know how that would fit in the special residential overlay districts and keep it hidden I have no idea but as a staff our procurement manager is looking at whether or not we want to continue as is extend the contract with waste pro which we can do or if we want to look at alternatives such as bidding out both the little the smaller bins and an alternative uh, lid Roll down cart, we would suggest that we issue a complete new RFP and have competition. Excuse me, Howard. Can I add one more thing in there? Marion Pace, procurement manager for the record. Um, there was two options as far as resoliciting um, requests for proposals. Um, uh, solicit the RFP for the carts only. And then if council does not want to award that contract, we can still continue our contract with Waste Pro. The other option was to solicit RFPs for the carts and bins, all as options, and then council would make the determination on which way to go. With that option, we would not continue the contract with Waste Pro. Unless we, they won the bid. Unless they won that bid, yes, but we wouldn't um, fall back, excuse me, fall back onto our existing contract. Understood, thank you. Mm -hmm. We have been very successful, I believe, in encouraging people to recycle. I mean, going up and down my street and other streets, I mean, the bins are full and overflowing. Um, we often have to need for perhaps a third bin. I mean, because again, we're interested in recycling as much as possible. So that's a good thing. To have the trash, they'll go all over. And yesterday when I went home, because it was our recycle day, my bins were in three, two different places on my yard. They were, after they were emptied, they were just thrown out there. So I think that is more negative in terms of the visual blight on our, on our neighborhood than would be a closed bin. I would agree, I don't like the big one. Uh, but the other uh, 48 one, uh, it would hold probably more than maybe two and a half bins. It's probably it'd be 48 gallons compared to the current 36. So bins, for two, two bins would be, be 36, 36 gallons. So it would hold more. Um, our neighbors, our older neighbors, um, have a hard time moving those bins when they're full. I have a hard time moving the bins when they're full. I think that having something on rollers and something that you can push outside your garage would be, again, safer, easier for um, all of us as we're aging. Yes, Rachel. Howard. I would hope that when you consider whatever you're going to do, that our recommendation is to bid out the options. Why? It gives us time when, through the bidding process to get input from the public mm -hmm. because we're just talking right now. Right. And there's a lot of people out there who are going to have strong feelings mm -hmm. on their little bins <laughs> and whether or not that push down cart is going to be able to fit in their garage are they going to be able to hide it in one of their areas in the aisles 
or Seminole Lakes, which are very tight, houses are tight to one another. We gotta be careful with this. Mm -hmm. um, this is a big change for us. And can we have both? Can we have, well, no, the, 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 the contractors have to have to just, their trucks are based on whether or not you have the bins, bins or the, to, to dump or, or the, uh, or the, Mm -hmm. the other Wait, thing. I didn't, I didn't, I gave my turn to Howard. I didn't, I want my turn back. <laughs> um, I'm okay with uh, bidding out both because I think last time it would have made a difference, I believe, if we went with carts over bins. So I'm not really sure. So I would, I would be in favor of clean slate, start over, look at the 48, the 64, I think is unwieldy. If that thing tips over, I mean, it could take somebody down. Um, and sometimes when they're turned over, they're, they're kind of hard to get back, mm -hmm. right? Um, especially if you have, you know, a little, a little um, steep driveway or something like that. It, it can get a little unwieldy, but I do like the lid. I would like to look at both. Um, I noticed yesterday I saw a commercial. We definitely have to do some education if we change because I saw a commercial for Collier County Solid Waste Division, and they have a little commercial on there about what you can and cannot put like no garden hoses, no this, no that. And it was pretty interesting the, you know, the outreach that they're doing to try to educate their public on what, because they even said in the commercial, if you contaminate one load of recycling, the whole truck could have to be thrown in, in the landfill because of it. So um, we definitely, if we change, we definitely need to do some education and outreach to our, to our, mm -hmm. our citizens. Nancy and then Kim and then I think Tom. Kim had her hand up first. No, I think you I did. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I agree that a clean slate. Let's let's bid out the options and see what it is. Um, I went online and saw that there are carts that are smaller than 48. So I don't know if that's a an option that w could be considered. Um, but I uh, I've already re started receiving emails from people. I also um, spoke with someone who does not recycle, won't recycle, but said, you know what? If you go to the 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 uh, carts, I'll start to recycle. So I thought, well, maybe that would encourage someone, you know. So I think change is really um, an awkward thing, and we would have to do. I agree, with, do some education, but I like the idea of of getting feedback while we're going through the the process of getting the information. Kim, uh, I agree, and along the lines of what Rachel was talking about, I've been learning a lot about recycling la lately because we're still on that project trying to be the first block to recycle in Ponte Gorda. <laughs> so, um, and that contamination is a real problem. And part of that also is water. I didn't realize that. So our, our stuff that is out in the open when it rains, yeah. it's all wet. Even water can contaminate your car and so it can be rejected. Mm -hmm. So it, it this recycling is going to get into a whole interesting uh, type of thing, but I, I, you know, I love the cart idea. I have three bins, and I wish I could have brought the pair of pants I had on last night that got all just wet down the side from carrying my bins out to the curb. <laughs> yes, Tom. Uh, first thing I'd like to say is I I'm, would be totally against the, the 64 gallon containers. One only has to drive around the unincorporated areas and see when the county introduced those containers in that area. I mean, they may have helped in, uh, in the recycling effort, but they, they, they're, they're just obvious all over the place. And the, the smaller unit, you know, maybe yes, a lot of people might still object to those because of the space that they take up. Right. Uh, a lot of people have gotten used to the bins, and I understand that they, it would be helpful if they could be on wheels and wheeled out. Well. If you could, where there is a wheel, where there is a will, there is a way. If you could put that. <laughs> I've seen those. I've seen people actually with little red carts mm -hmm. and put them on there. I've seen people with, so, with you know, strings. PVC goes a long way, and, and the, uh, you, can, you can do a lot with it. So I would, I would like to can see if there's, uh, first of all, I, I really want to see this go through the, 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 uh, the planning commission and, uh, and have the SROs look at it and get their thoughts on it. Uh, I, I'm wondering if there is an option to do both, to keep the bins and also to use a, uh, one of the, the smaller That's wheel That's what I was wondering, too. Yes. Can I say one more thing? Yes. Um, I just want to make sure that you will work with the, the folks that are going to be bidding because 
if we do stay with the bins and all of our stuff is contaminated because it gets all wet, it's really kind of a waste of our time if that is indeed a factor. So I, I think we just need to be educated on what it is we, what we need have, to. Have, have we experienced any, any of the bins being rejected because they're, they're wet? I mean, people are gonna be- don't know. We do have um, Keith um, from Waste uh, Pro with us who can address that on our current contract. One of the things about the uh, the cart that you just showed, how did, would you, how would um, the truck uh, would pull those off? Um, how would you get the trash in, or the recyclables in the bottom one if you're using that? See, I'm thinking uh, that I would be the only person in my home and I would be trying to use this type of a, a tram, because I was thinking of this too. It'd be mm -hmm. kind of easy to put something on, but. But isn't it just as big as the it, small it, one? Well, no, not, not really, because it's not taking up uh, any more, well, you know, but to some extent, in the width of it, yeah, I guess when you, you, you could, yes, it's probably close to the 24 inches that that container is, but. I agree. I mean, I think vetting it and, and getting, but I, I still agree we should put it on. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon. I'm sorry. Good morning. For the record, Keith Benaziak with Waste Pro. Um, to answer uh, uh, Ms. Pace's comments regarding the contamination, um, when contamination exists, it's deducted from the load uh, at the uh, recycling center. We haven't experienced a lot of contamination per se in the city of Punta Gorda. I think everybody does a pretty good job at you know putting the right things out there. Occasionally, we'll see some things, but it hasn't become a concern for us. Uh, does if, it, if water gets in the bin, does that contaminate it? No, because people inherently put water bottles in their, uh, uh, you know, in their recycling bins, and when we go compact it inside the truck, all the leftover waters, wine, beer, soda, it all gets mixed in anyway. It doesn't help it, that's for sure, um, because the paper will get like slurry, like your newspaper on a wet morning gets. Um, it's not as easy to recycle as a dry newspaper, so it would affect it, yes. Thank Carolyn, you. I have a question. Yes, sir. As far as the truck pickup with the bins, is it pretty standard? I mean, what we have there is a good representation of what is used, or are there a lot of different choices? Or No, the, the options that you have here are good. I would caution you not to go smaller than the 48, um, a couple of reasons. Number one, people will fill them up. When you give them a cart, they will recycle more. They're going to do it. And it doesn't take much if you're, you know, uh, uh, Councilman Devine or Vice Mayor Devine is using um, three or four, they're going to exceed that right there. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is when you get to a smaller cart, they become somewhat unstable because the base is smaller. And then you see them where you put them out in the street, and if you don't get in the right spot, they become top heavier. They don't set down as easy. When you look at the larger cart, it has a wider base. It'll go back in its position much better, and it's much more stable when you're trying to roll it to your curb. Thank you. Thank you. We need education. So then what I hear us saying is that we do want to go out and uh, get bids on both options. On just the carts or the carts no, 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 and no. the bins? Both bins options. And yeah. 48. 48. Mm. And 48. 48. Okay. And 48. It's 48. 48 the only size bins that there are. Well, I, it's a real poor display. I should have had Urban Design help me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on the blue cart, it shows the 32 gallon and the 24 gallon by tape, the heights, and they're really pretty much the same. It's just maybe an inch narrower in a couple of areas, um, but they are relatively the same height. Okay, thank you. Yes, Nancy. Um, yeah, I would be in favor of including the larger 64 gallon in the the process because i know um when howard and i were talking about this and mikhail um i know you're listening lives in the county and they've gone to the large 64 gallon cart because they recycle so much that's the point that was made it's, be, i'm sorry it, well it, and in the, the county uh, residents are given the option you can you can go to a larger cart i don't know if they're charged more but i know that they have the option if they want a larger cart it's not like a mandatory. Tom? That's the so. point that I was making before. You can drive around the unincorporated areas and see those 64 gallon containers all over the place. I don't think that our residents want to be looking at the carts outside the house. I, I certainly wouldn't um, use that as the standard, but if there was somebody who did recycle, were heavy, heavy recyclers, 
it may be perhaps it's something that we would want to consider and, and letting them make I think that would there. be administratively difficult mm -hmm. I'm okay with the 48 I don't I think the 64 is just too big, mm -hmm. it is big. I think I would agree with just the keeping the uh, at, at 48 at this point in time and then if people needed another one they could do two 48s I mean can you have a have both could somebody write, say I want the 64 or well I guess you can I don't want to muddy the waters okay so. I agree with um, Councilmember Casey I think it would be a real administrative yeah. nightmare okay. how that would happen right okay <laughs> Blue, <laughs> no, orange and I like blue. The, I like the dark one. I, I'm a with dark you. Gray. Dark gray. Okay. Uh, so, do we have? I think we have consensus. We're going out for um, bids on both the bin as well as the 48. Okay. Yes, we'll be doing Plus. our uh, request for proposals. So, thank you. Yeah. Marion, could you remove that? Uh, oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you. In the meantime, we are going to. Um, get the word out to all of the special residential overlay areas, all the other neighborhoods in the city. We're going to have it as the next question on our Facebook page, <laughs> and we'll have it in the weekly reports. Well, I think before we just ask the question, I think we need to have information so that there is um, more data that the, our residents are getting in terms of how much more that they could recycle or if this one bin the 48 would contain two bins so that and then it is on rollers and then it would be easy and it doesn't when you really take a look at that it doesn't take up any more room and in fact my two bins take up more space in my garage because it's they're on the floor so Nancy yeah I was going to say um, suggest that to put together the pros and cons like that um, showing the space and that kind of thing um, so that it's an edu education process, but I do agree um, with Howard. It's great. It's great to have as a question. Uh, I'm finding that the residents that have already emailed me, it's more of a I like it the way it is, without thinking through what and the it, opportunity is there. Yeah, and so and and they still may choose to really want the bin, but I think it's it's an opportune time to rethink through things. So, and again, like they that. may be perceiving just as Tom did. Excuse me. Um, that the bin or the, the roller one was going to be as big as the large one and that I think we all say that's not what we want so we need to have a little bit more information before you just ask well do you want a bin or do you want a, a roller cart Rachel? technical question do those have holes in the bottom like the bins do no. okay because I don't like those holes in the bottom of my bins I don't have I don't have holes in the bottom of my bin drainage holes mm -hmm. they leak? yeah they yeah. leak okay all right, we're going to move on. Otherwise, uh, we'll be here all afternoon. All right, the next is our discussion relating to dogs in city parks, uh, 8A. We, um, <coughs> the attached email that you got regarded a, uh, a request from a customer. They were walking their dog to Ponce Park, and they were going along the sidewalk, and then when they got to the park, uh, they're not allowed in um, and dogs are not allowed in nature park there's a very nice trail nature park going behind the fire station that's a nice walking trail a nature trail mm -hmm. not allowed in nature park they're not allowed in Gilchrist Park except along the harbor walk they're not allowed in Alice Park they're not allowed in Pittman Park they're not allowed in Beach Park which is around Park Beach Circle um, they are allowed in Lashley Park. And they are allowed along the Punta Gorda Pathways. When we put the uh, question out on our Facebook page uh, this past week, we've received uh, 12 comments so far. And um, the consensus of those comments was that, yeah, we should look at um, areas that we might want to allow dogs to be able to walk in, but we need to be cautious. We need to be cautious because the more areas we allow dogs to be, we're not all perfect owners of pets. And we sometimes allow, and when I say we, I'm talking about the general we, we don't always pick up. And the more areas that you allow dogs to be, the possibility is you're going to have more uh, 
poof right. out there. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful about this. That's a technical term. Yeah, that's a technical <laughs> so um, that's where we are. I'm in.